Hey everyone, this is Ryan Higley in the Instructional Technology Center coming at you with another tutorial and uh, this one's going to be about learning modules. So what's a learning module? Well, learning module is an organized collection of content presented together that helps students see a subject, concept, or theme as one logically structured and coherent group of content. And really you could sort of think about a learning module as kind of like a chapter in a book. Uh, but with the added benefit of being able to present downloadable files and web links, quizzes, assignments, YouTube videos, lots of things. And uh, sort of like a book, there will also be a table of contents along the left hand side, uh, which helps students to see sort of the scope and the structure of the entire lesson. And you can also have students go through it in, in a structured, linear fashion, so they have to finish one section before they go to the next. Or you can have them uh, just click around wherever they want inside and do, do it in whatever order they'd like. So we'll talk about both of those things. We'll talk about other options that you can do inside of a learning module when we get started in it. So let's do that. All right, so we're going to start off. We're in Blackboard self-paced training, uh, and uh, we're going to add a uh, module, and we're just going to talk about the different settings and, and things like that. Along the left-hand side, you can see that I've added course modules here, so I'm going to click on that. And basically, this is just a content area that we're going to add a module to. So up at the top, we have build content. About halfway down the left-hand side, we have learning module. So I'm going to click on that. And really, this is going to uh, uh, give us a lot of the same forms that we've seen throughout this training. I'm going to put in test module. And we can give it text, so if this is where we wanted to explain what this module was going to be about, uh, this is where we put that. So. Okay. And then the options down here below, the learning module options. Do we want to enforce sequential viewing of the learning module? And what this means is, like I was saying before, do you want the students to have to go through um, uh, sequentially each content item until they get to the end? Or do you want them to just be able to jump around and select on any content item? It'll depend on how you want to set up your module and, and the content that you're trying to give them and, and of course your learning outcomes. Uh, and then open in a new window, yes or no. I would I would keep this as no because a lot of times if let's say a student's uh, browsing this on their phone or on a on an iPad or some sort of other tablet, sometimes it's hard to uh, get back to the original screen uh, if you're having this open in something uh, other than just your original Blackboard screen. And then the other standard options that, that you've seen, and then number four, the table of contents. Do you want to show the table of contents uh, to your users? And really all that is, is that's just the index that's going to show them all the content. So do you want to be able to show them that or not show them that? And I always suggest yes. And then this hierarchy display, it says none. It's defaulted to none, but you can say letters, mixed numbers, numbers, Roman numerals. Really that's just going to um, uh, uh, add those in front of each piece of content. The only reason I would think that you would want to use that is if you wanted to refer to it. So you would say the third item on there, make sure that you really do that assignment or the fifth item, something like that. So I'm just going to leave it all as defaults and I'm going to hit submit. Now you can see now in my course modules, this is my test module and you can see it's given my uh, directions of what this test module is going to be about. And then if I want to jump into there, I can just hit and select the title. And now you can see that this looks a little different. Uh, this is my table of contents that I'm going to do on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, it looks almost the same. I could build content, I can add items here, I could put another entire uh, uh, lesson plan or image or anything like that inside. I can do assessments like assignments or tests inside of here. Or I can add tools too, we can add links to discussion boards and things like that. So uh, this, is, this is how it looks as an instructor. Uh, as a student, it looks a little bit different. So once we start adding some things inside of here, I'll make sure to turn this edit mode off at some point so you can see what it's going to look like from your side, but also from the student side. So let's just add a couple things just to see what that's like. Really, it should, I'm gonna go through it quickly because it should be exactly the same as everything it was before. So I'm gonna say build content and I'm gonna put an item in it first. So I'm just gonna add a PDF that maybe has the instructions or, or some, uh, 
some content that you want them to see right at the very beginning of your module. All of these options that you're seeing should look very similar to all of the other content that you've been adding to a course. I'm just going to hit submit. Now I have this very, uh, very first um, content item in my learning module. So here it is, the required reading, and it's a video game PDF. And along here on the left hand side you can see it's added to my table of contents. So now let's do uh, another thing. I'm going to add a YouTube video. Same thing, go to build content, add YouTube video. I'm going to search for video game history. I'm going to choose one of these, a brief history of video games. I'm going to select that guy. I'm going to give it a description. Change this and say it's an embedded video. Okay, there's my brief history of video games. And then finally, I'm going to end this module with a quiz. If you already have a quiz built out, you won't have to create one from scratch, but I don't. I'm just going to put in one true or false question. actually true. Great, so now you can see that in my learning module I have three pieces of content here. I've required the required reading for the material of the course, which is this PDF, I then have my YouTube video that I've embedded here, and then the video games quiz, which I misspelled. <laughs> So now, this is what it looks like for me as the instructor. All of the content listed down a lot how I would see it in a normal folder. Um, and actually, speaking of folders, you can group things inside of a learning module. So we can create uh, blank pages and content folders. If let's say there's a, a, a few different items of reading material, you can have them go into that and just have that show up first. Uh, so anyway, so I, I've added all of these things. Let's see what it looks like from a student perspective. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this edit mode off. And here's what it will look like for the students. Everything will just show up one at a time here. So I can see that here's my video games PDF and the instructions. And I can either download that or I can move on to page two of three. And then here's the video. Or I can select on it from the table of contents. So I can select wherever I want to go around here. Different areas of content. So if you haven't watched the video yet on adaptive release, uh, you can go to that. There'll be a little pop down that'll come down right here and you can click on that and uh, you'll be able to watch everything about adaptive release. But uh, if you have already, I'm just going to show you how you could use adaptive release inside a learning module to make it even more dynamic and engaging to your students. So right now I have a, I have a quiz here at the bottom of my list. Let's say I wanted them to be able to have already seen this required reading material, the brief history of video games, and then take in the quiz. And once they've passed the quiz, then they're allowed to actually do the assignment for that module because I want them to have really understood what I, what I put in as that content before they go ahead and try the assignment. So what I can do is I can create that assignment. So I'm gonna create an assignment. This is their uh, uh, module assignment for, let's say, week one. And I'm going to say uh, that they're going to um, write a paper. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to say that this is worth 50 points. And everything else I'm going to keep default. This week one assignment. I don't want the students to be able to see that or even attempt that until they've gone through all of this content beforehand. So I don't want them just saying, yeah, I'll be able to figure it out and jump in and do the assignment. Uh, I want them to be able to know that they went through all the rest of the 
uh, of the content to, to be able to understand it. So I'm going to click on here and say uh, Adaptive Release Advanced, and we're going to add some rules to this. So I'm going to create a rule, and rule one is fine. And I'm going to create some criteria, and one is going to be review status. So what I want is them to be, so when I click on browse, it's going to come up with every piece of content in my course. I have a lot of it. I'm going to go down to, here's my course modules, my test module, and that required reading, I want them to be able to say that yes, they did, uh, they did uh, look at that before they started the assignment. So that's one. I'm going to do another one with review status, and I want to make sure that they watch that YouTube video. So I'll scroll down to that. So, brief history of video games, select that one, okay. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is create some criteria that they actually had to get a good grade on the quiz before they're allowed to see that. So I'm going to say that within that video games quiz, that they had to get a score um, somewhere between 80 and 100%. So this is percent, and they basically had to get a B or above for it to unlock for them. So I'm going to hit submit. And so now we have a review. So this is our advanced uh, adaptive release for this module. Basically, the students had to say that they reviewed the reading material, that they reviewed the YouTube video, and that they got an 80 or a B or above on the quiz. And then they're allowed to take their assignment. So I'm going to say that's good. I'm going to hit OK. And OK. Great. So now if we look at this from a student perspective, See the required reading. I'm going to mark that as reviewed. The brief history of video games. I already got that as reviewed. And now I have to take my video games quiz because I don't have that yet. So I'm still going to use that and I'm going to click to launch and I'm just going to take that really quick. Great. So now you can see I got 100% on that. Now I can go to my week one assignment and actually see all the stuff for that and be able to browse my computer and turn it in. So you can see how this would uh, really help if you had um, lots of content that you know you want students to be able to review and see before they get to the actual assignment or test even uh, part of this. So that's a great way that you can use learning modules in your course to really uh, uh, make a collection of content that seems uh, like it's very much grouped together and, and structured logically for that topic or theme. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, learning modules or anything like that, you can post them to the discussion board or you can uh, comment in the uh, YouTube comments below. Thanks for watching.